I think this uh, summit signifies uh, an increasing tendency towards South-South collaboration and partnership because the South now has many centers of excellence in technology and capital. We're no longer dependent on the developed uh, North uh, in, 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 you know, in, in, in the previous world order. This is, in a way, uh, a multipolar uh, global uh, order that has emerged. It's not emerging. Uh, China is a significant player in it. We like to believe, uh, and, and I think it's been proven, that the kingdom is a significant part of this multipolar world that has emerged. And we're going to play our part, not only of developing our own economy, but also developing our region and spreading uh, what, we, uh, what we have in terms of development opportunities also to Africa, Central Asia, uh, the Indian subcontinent, uh, and we believe uh, that economic cooperation between China uh, and Saudi Arabia and the GCC and the entire Arab region will, will, will be a significant part of that. A lot of the attention on the summit has really focused around the fact that it came just days after the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken was visiting Saudi Arabia and of course meeting with the Crown Prince. There are some who say that Secretary Blinken's visit reflects the fact that Saudi and China are growing closer and perhaps the Middle East has become an arena for a US-China rivalry. Is that fair? That is, that is not the way we see it. I think, uh, as I mentioned, Saudi Arabia is going to be uh, a partner to uh, all of the major economies uh, globally, and China certainly is... Uh, is, is a prominent one uh, in that field. We have fantastic uh, relationship with the U.S. It's been, uh, you know, uh, part of, uh, of of our global relationships for uh, since the creation of the modern Saudi Arabia. That is uh, well known, and I, and I believe it is uh, it is very strong as evidenced during the visit of President Biden uh, last year. And I think uh, the fact that Secretary Blinken was here. Uh, last week just reinforces that strong relationship. Uh, uh, a few months ago in September, we had the largest delegation ever from Saudi Arabia, public and private, in Washington in the Select USA Investment Summit. At the same time, I happened to be in Los Angeles with an equally large uh, delegation, public and private, at the Milken Investment Conference on the west coast of uh, of the United States. Uh, the U.S. remains to be the largest foreign investor in Saudi Arabia, whether it's direct investors or uh, equity funds or global banks who are very much part of our economy and our landscape. So I don't see our relationship with the U.S., with China as being mutually exclusive. I think, in fact, they complement each other. And I hope Saudi Arabia can be a factor of aligning the interests of private sector in China and aligning the interests with those of the U.S. And we see, of course, still a lot of direct investment from the U.S. going into China. The U.S. has not invested. Many partners we work with in the U.S. Uh, are also back and forth to China looking for opportunities. So we believe that's going to evolve over time. We don't see disruptions in those relationships happening, but certainly what sets our strategy is our own interests, and those interests with, uh, with China are strong and rising.